Hello again, my friends, and you are my friends, and welcome to the first transfer talk of the summer. That's right, we have a confirmation coming through, Mr. Phillips. We have a, a new signing, the first of the year. I, I can see the uh, the live chat is already absolutely uh, bouncing off the yeah. walls. I will get some comments in just a second, uh, but for those that are just getting in, Sitting down, seeing we're going live. Uh, obviously, we're here today because uh, we have town have announced today that they have we will sign Rotherham striker Freddie Ladapo uh, on a free transfer map with a yeah. three year contract. He has done the bits and pieces for the club media already. He claims, um, that the manager Kieran McKenna was a great influence in, in the player coming here. We've had great conversations and we got on really well. I thoroughly enjoy listening to him talk about his thought process, views and objectives as they fit in with mine. It really helps when you connect with the manager and I can't wait to work with him. Brilliant. Mr. Phillips, what are your initial yeah. thoughts of Ladabo? Um, well, I was surprised <laughs> that it's happened so quickly, that move. Yeah, but please. I mean, that's a striker we've always kind of looked at, isn't it? As, as, as town yeah. fans, someone who's been kind of part and parcel of Rotherham's success. And has a really good goal scoring record in League One, which mm -hmm. as we've been lamenting on previous shows, <laughs> as soon as yesterday's one, we've been saying we've been struggling in that department. So yeah. really good. Um now this opens some question marks up, doesn't it? Because you always say mine, didn't you? You said this last season that if you sign a striker early and you you're known to be playing just one up front, is that gonna put people off? My feeling now is that we're gonna be playing two up front next Ooh, season. Oh, okay. What's that feeling based off? Just the fact that, because what you always say, you know, if you sign one striker and then you've got someone behind that coming in, then it's not such an appealing, it's not such an appealing move, is it? Because you've got two, three, four strikers all fighting out for one position. Yeah. And then to me suggests that because we've gone first with a striker, okay, it might be that he was available quickly. And I know Sheffield Wednesday was interested in him in January. No, they were yeah. around him yesterday. It was in their local in the Yorkshire Post, I think it was. I don't know. I just that that to me is a signpost that we might play two up front next season. Okay, it's, you, you mentioned the Wednesday interest. Um, before I come to that, I'm just to get a few comments. We've got Mike Baker, uh, the guy who knows where the back of the net is, and that's what we need. Goals, win games, yeah. and the gaffer we trust. We have got Matt from our friends at the on the Rotherham side, New York Talk, joining us uh, to give us his thoughts mm -hmm. on. Ladapo, so stick around for those. Uh, the, a view from somebody who's seen him week in, week out. Yeah. Um, Mark Rowell, evening, Gov. Is this still season two or season three? No day off for you. Never a day off at the TT Towers, Mark. Even in, when we're, we're not. We're mid seasons. <laughs> even when we're not, yeah, we're midway through the changeover <laughs> to the branding. So it's yeah. the, uh, the different sort of intro there, I guess. Uh, Norman Greenwald, can't see Ladapo being our main striker, rather on the left or right of a front three, says Norman. Or like Jackson, a sub coming on after 65 minutes. I'd be very surprised if Freddie Ladapo, uh, with, with his goal score, which we'll, we'll get to in a second with some sofa score stats, would would be prepared, would be happy to come and sit on the bench and be a, a player that comes on for the last uh, 25 minutes, Matt. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I I, I think this is a signpost to the fact that we're going to play a different formation next season. Well, certainly in terms of strikers, anyway. You still play three five two, can't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's just that's just. You know, with the number 10 in there, just pushing forward. Or, that's as, I, as I said yesterday, Matt, this could be it with Jackson as your number two and then Pigs as your number three. If if Pig was to move on, maybe you look at bring another, another striker in to compete that's that, that's better. But I, I, I generally, what I suggested, I, I think still sticks. I would look at those three with a one up front type system with Chaplin in behind and other attacking options. And I, I'd be relatively comfortable with those three. I really would. Fair enough. Yeah, Rich wasn't too keen on that, was he? <laughs> well, yeah, he's not here. He's 35,000 feet in the air. What he thinks doesn't matter anymore. I can see where he is. He's over the coast of Bulgaria. I looked it up. <laughs> 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 Rich leaves the country, everybody, and we sign a player. You couldn't make is it, it up. He's in Uncle Bulgaria. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, where does this leave the Cauley Woodrow uh, rumour? Was it just that? Was it just a rumour? Who knows? Rumor? I mean, it, but so much remains to be seen. And, it, and it's a really exciting start to the transfer window because of yes. just that, how much that now opens up. Colin still wants Clark Harris. I certainly wouldn't say no. Callie last week was hinting that that was one of the main targets. 
Uh, you know, it's, take that for it's what it's pissing me, though, isn't it? Because, like, Sheffield Wednesday, obviously, on their doorstep, Rotherham's doorsteps, so you wouldn't have to move in terms of geography. So, have we blown them out of the water in terms of wages and whatever, whatever else might be involved again? Well, what I would say it's really good, and I'll open it up in a second. And obviously, we've got we've got Matt joining us as well. Mm. Um, hopefully, Matt's not like the black the black the Blackburn fan who uh, sort of burst our bubble with Christian Morton a little bit. Uh, it's gonna cost so you Matt, points. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so no pressure, Matt. Don't bring the vibe mm. down, buddy. Um, but no, honesty, obviously, is what we want from you. Uh, opinions is what makes this platform what it is. But well, what I would say is, it's really good for the football club. To be one of the front runners early, mm. early out the doors, early, yeah. early in, but not just oh, it's somebody that yeah, it wasn't really a lot of interest. It was really easy to secure. Wednesday were after him in January, so much mm. so that he, he reportedly mm. handed in a transfer request. Mm. Reportedly mm. still interested uh, now, but it's yeah. town that's securing. That's not been the case often throughout the last ten plus years oh, at this God football man. club. God no. I mean, look, what was it? Two years ago, we were signing Ollie Hawkins after we couldn't get Clark Harris. <laughs> He's from Set- Romford, Matt. Yes, I thought you'd like that. He's a good uh, boy. Ollie Hawkins, of course, sent off as a centre half at Wembley at the weekend. <laughs> yeah, time less change. about Ollie Hawkins, the absolute <laughs> better, my friend. Less about yeah. that. We're moving on to bigger and better things. Freddie Ladapo, uh, Ladapo, 22 games last year, 11 goals, 2.4 shots per game, uh, 14 big chances missed. But as I always say, you've got to be in those positions to miss those chances. Uh, but his heat map, Matt, for the season is something that quite intrigues me, really, because, you know, it's that central area, isn't it? It's that it fox in the box almost, yeah. if you like. I think he's, I don't know, Matt, Matt will know more about this than we do. But my take on the depot is that he's quite an instinctive striker, might feed on scraps. I think he scores a lot of his goals in like the six yard box. Mm-hmm. I've seen him like on quest on that score a few from outside the area, but he's certainly someone who might run onto the ball, get the ball into the channels, into the box, which is something we've been crying out for for a long time. And then, you know, he's, he's there around about six, seven, eight yards penalty spot to slot the ball home. Now this again calls this again, suggests to me that, that Bond won't come back because that's Bond's role. We was supposed to be. I think it's pretty fair to say that, you know, Bond is a, a target, if things weren't to progress in the right direction with players such as Freddie mm. you know, Ladapa, a bit like a Luke Varney was for Mick McCarthy when he was, you know, we don't want you, Luke. Nothing worked out. And then season starts tomorrow. <laughs> someone get Reg on the phone quick. God, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> quick. Yeah. Who's got Reg- Reg's digits? <laughs> um, that was a little, yeah, maybe that's what they look, they're looking at Bond with. We've got uh, Callie. Apparently, Ladapo spoke to some current and former ITFC players, including one ex defender who spoke highly of town. Uh, probably Jason DeVos, Kelly. Uh, if you know me, you can guess who. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought he did. I thought he did. I just wanted to throw in big Jason's name. Uh, Danielle, he looks great coming from to bring us to the championship. Mike D, someone who runs into the box, you say, Matt. All our strikers were allergic yeah, to that six Mike's, yard box last Mike's season. Spot on there, yeah, spot on right. There, yeah. I'll drop a link. Come on, have your say <laughs> if you should say want to. But first of all, here is our friend Matt from New York Talk. Matt. Um, it's nice to talk to you. you. Hello, good evening, boys. How are we doing? How, how are you? All right, thanks. We're all good. I'm good. And I'm getting ready for the championship. I'm very happy. I'm <laughs> sure yeah, I bet you bloody are. Yeah. Ready to get it in. <laughs> we did a show together in the summer, this time last year, yes. me and Matt. And we were discussing escape in this league. And I said at the time, Rotherham have the secret escape route. Because once again, Rotherham have literally just come for a pit stop and they're back again. Yeah, well, yeah, let's ask the expert. What what is the case getting out of this division, Matt? Because we can't bloody do it. What's what's <laughs> one secret? What's the secret sauce? Uh, Paul Warren is as simple as that. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Get get the right man in charge. Somebody who knows the league. Players who knows the league. Um, right, get recruitment right. Obviously, we didn't lose a lot of players last season. We lost Matt Crooks, who you guys are interested in. Other than that, it was the mm. same squad. That we almost set up in the championship, so it's almost the championship squad that's got us back up. We had a blip towards the end of the season. We had to make it dramatic, yeah, yeah. didn't we? Yeah, yeah, you were wavering. You were wavering. Uh, you, you, you took a while to huff and puff against us and our yeah. our yeah. young defender. But you say players that that, that that know this level. Well, you know, there's probably mm. none that know the level more than than the one we've signed today. Talk to us about Freddie Ladapo. What can, as town fans, can we expect from our new fox in the box? I'll call him. 
Yeah, fox in the box is a good way to describe him, to be honest with you. Um, if you can get the ball in and around the box, in the six-yard box, then it'll get a lot of goals for you. Uh, the last time in League One, a lot of our goals came from set players. Trying to, it was about keeping the ball alive from from corners. Keep the ball alive in the box. Freddie's there. Freddie will come alive in that area. He's not going to go win the first ball ever, but he will be there to pick up the scraps. Um, he can be quick, but he doesn't run that much. Um, he is he is lazy, um, but he gets your goals. He got a fifteen, I think, in the in the season that got cut got cut short. It's fifteen out of yeah. thirty games, which is good. I think his goals to minute record is brilliant. But he doesn't fit into our system. A rather United system is work hard. Goals will come if you work hard. Or well, Freddie, they just come for him and he doesn't work hard. So it didn't. It was a marriage of convenience just for me. Yeah. He's not a rather United player. Um, but he got the goals in the end. It's all without you mentioning the transfer request earlier. It's all been left with a sour taste in the mouth. Yeah. Um, yeah. But good luck to him. I, got that's funny. I was, I was, I was thinking, Matt. Like, I'm right in thinking he played up front with Smith then, did he? In a uh, for the most part, yeah. Yeah. So I that goes back to what we were just saying at the top of the show. That obviously, Ipswich have played with one up front all season. I just wonder if not we're going to see a formation shift a little bit. And it, it, he obviously plays better with a two. And who better to play with Smith, right? <laughs> yeah. He, he can't play as one. Well. In the championship last time, we played him as a one with, with Crooks just behind him. And yeah. it, was, it was a waste of time. It, 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 as a one, you need to have that. You need to have that work rate. You need to put, run the channels, <laughs> yeah. do yeah. the dirty work. Freddie's not going to do with that. So, for me, you you can't play a one up top with Freddie. So yeah, I think you're right. I think they will see a change if you were playing one up top. Mm, interesting. Okay, there you go, Matt. So you, you, Matt thinks Matt thinks we're going to have a, a change system, as does Matt mm. from Talking Town. So you, you mentioned the work rate. You, you know, mm. before we go to the work rate, what, what what about the Wednesday situation? What 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 was the was the crack there from a Rotherham's fans perspective? What's what's going on? Uh, so the story goes that he handed in a transfer request about the 3rd of January, something like that. And at the time, we, we the club had had no inquiries, no bids or anything like that. We He, he decided we'll put transfer request in. And then within the week, it had been leaked to the press, um, which wouldn't have come from the club because the club, all our transfers are undisclosed. We keep everything under, 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 under the radar. So it's yeah, been leaked from Freddie's camp, it, it appears. Um, and we're all, all through January, we're told there's been no inquiries. We don't know why he's, really why he's put the transfer request in. We were top at the league, um, a game away from Wembley with the Papa Johns. Um, I think the Wednesday interest was a very late transfer, uh, deadline day loan inquiry, mm -hmm. which was, well, we're not going to loan to a promotion rival and we don't want to loan him anyway. So it would that was always going to be rejected anyway. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit of a weird move then. <laughs> yeah. Very, very strange, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's Sheffield Wednesday. It's what they do. They're, they're a bit odd. Um, <laughs> but then it, sort of, it was difficult for Paul Warren because he had to take him out of the team. He's put a transfer, so he can't play for a period of time, especially when it got leaked publicly. Because if Freddie mm. played it, he got slaughtered by fans. Mm. And I think Warren did a good job of taking Freddie away for about a month or so, and then he came back in. And we're good. His work rate stepped up. Uh, he scored against Sheffield Wednesday. He was really good. And then he came yeah. back out of the team, just just a game or two off, and then came back in. And he would just might as well. We were playing 10 men for some of those games that he was there. It was literally, mm -hmm. there was nothing good about him for those periods. And then for the last four or five games of the season, he didn't turn up to anything. He didn't turn up to the final day at season. He didn't turn up to the trophy parade. Oh. He, he probably got his medal, but we just, we just didn't see him for the last month of the season. And he wasn't injured. Um, so that just that, that's the bitter taste that it's leaving out. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, that yeah. looks a bit strange as well, doesn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. and there was a story I, I've retweeted from the uh, from our podcast. If you go on IFC pod on Twitter, when we got relegated from Cardiff at Cardiff last season, uh, mm. there was all we we're obviously very upset. And Freddie's basically refused to shake the manager's hand, refused to shake his teammates' hands. And there's been a bit of a kerfuffle in the changing rooms because he's upset his teammates. With his reaction of not because he weren't allowed on the pitch, um, so there is question marks over his yeah on the pitch. What I will say to that is I've got to give credit to him. There was a young lass who was. Uh, Do you mean this 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 story, uh, Matt? Oh no, I can't grab it. Sorry, sorry, I can't grab it. <laughs> it's from the Robin Advertiser. If you go on the Robin Robin Advertiser's Twitter page, you'll be able to see it on there. It doesn't paint him in a good light, but there are other. Freddie Ray, the pitch is clearly a good guy. There was a young lass who was basically bullied for playing football because she's a girl, I think racially abused as well. 
and oh. Freddie went and spoke to her after a game. He gave her his shirt and just made a, you know, just took that time away. Brilliant. From him. So he clearly is a brilliant guy. Yeah. But he clearly, um, there was a clearly something underlying there that you know, as fans, we, we don't sort of get the, get the privy to. Now we yeah. said at the top of the show, Matt, yeah. you're a fan of, of a club that notoriously escapes this level. Mm. If just fit the the, the, the the position a second, if this was a player that you were signing. Uh, you know, knowing what is available to us in terms of the stats uh, and fans' opinions, is this, a, is, this a, is this a player that you would, as a fan, would be excited about knowing what he can do and think he, can, he could get you out of the division, or would you be lukewarm? You know, because you're a League One season hmm. vet, you need goals. And I, I think when he came, we were all very excited. When we when we signed him, he'd got 20 for Plymouth, when we got relegated, and he got 20 goals, which is which is obviously very impressive. Yeah, um, so. You can't not be excited about signing a striker number one. A number two a striker who gets goals. Uh, if if you're allowing him to do the dirty work, then it's just not going to work. But if he if you just need somebody to score the goals, Freddie is, Fred is probably your man. Um, I don't know how you guys are going to set up next season. Obviously, new manager. I, I don't know what yeah. ideas he's got in got in mind. But if you, I feel like if you if you're signing Freddie, if the manager must know what he's going to do because he needs. You all, almost got to carry him until he scores the goals, and then he will carry the rest of the team with those goals. If that sort of makes sense, yeah. Um, but uh, it, it, it is not, exciting. I would be excited. Yeah, you'd be excited. I mean, I, I struggle to put a name to to the the, the player because you, when, the moment you say, "Oh, a bit like so and so," people even say, "Oh, you're saying he's as good as or whatever." <laughs> but but somebody a bit like Chikorito, Javier Hernandez, somebody who as mm. a team. You're not going to get an awful lot out of the player except the most crucial thing in a football game, which is scoring and goal. Yeah, I think that's fair, to be honest with you. Yeah, you can go back to people like Michael Owen and he's just a poacher, essentially. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, having said that, he can score screamers. He scored against Wednesday uh, in the 96th minute from 25 yards and similarly against Watford. He has got, yeah, frustratingly, he's got loads in his locker. He just doesn't use them. <laughs> <laughs> There was times this season where his work rate was amazing, but it was for literally like seven games, and then it just went yeah. away. Tailed off. Is he, is he like an, a bit of an enigma character then, Matt? Very much so. Yeah, you never yeah, know what you're going to get with Freddie. Um, yeah. He's quite streaky as well. Uh, I think I think he didn't, I don't think he scored. He's got an opening day. I don't think he scored for 10 games, and then got eight in six or something like that. Yeah. Um, if he gets a goal, he'll go on, he'll go on a run. Um that's what strikers, mm. League One strikers are. If you go, even goal scorers at League One level will be very streaky, won't they? Um, well, well, we had that with Macaulay Bonnie we referenced at the top, yeah. and you know he got what 10, 11, 12 goals in two months, and yeah. got one for the rest of the campaign. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's what you're going to get with Freddie, probably. <laughs> Before I let you go, Matt, you've seen him every week, week in, week out. You've highlighted some of the strengths, some of the weaknesses. But if you were manager of Tristown Football Club, how would you? Be looking to use Freddie Ladapo next season. What would you be your master plan to to put him in the best position for the, him and the football club to succeed? You need a Michael Smith type player next to him, somebody who's going to do the dirty work, can bring him into the game, can link him up. Uh, I don't think he's going to work with a ten behind him. It needs to be a big man with him. Um, and then you've got to be strong on set pieces. You've got to have, you've got to keep that ball alive in the box for as long as possible, whether it's from a set piece across or whatever. If you keep that ball alive, eventually Freddie will find it. Um, so that's the, that's the way to get the best out, I think. Perfect. It's interesting that, Matt, because we've been useless at set pieces all season. We scored one goal, I think, from a corner all season. So yeah. it's interesting yeah. you reference that because obviously McKenna said you can't get out of this division unless you're scoring set piece goals, be it a free kick yeah. corner. And it just didn't do that all, all season. Hundred percent. Yeah, get it in there, get it in mixer, and he will get. He will find his way to the to the to the end of the ball yeah. and put it back in net. Yeah. He's he's not a, he's not a great finisher, but he's good enough with the chances that he gets. Yeah, that he gets. Well, presumably you lot were buzzing when you signed him from Plymouth then, when he scored those twenty yeah. goals there at home park. Yeah, exactly. And when that's a goal scored. What we've been crying out. We, we had Michael Smith, who everybody knows his strengths, but goals weren't his strengths before this season, Smithy. Uh, mm -hmm. And we get him the twenty goal. We start, it was out. It's still our record signing, four hundred grand or whatever it was, four fifty something like that. Mm -hmm. So again, it was really, really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And credit where credit's due, Freddie has done a job for us. It, it, it's been a marriage of convenience. Yeah. Um, just yeah. the endings annoyed him. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting you say that a, a tall player up top with him because that that then takes us back, Martin, to the the Coley Woodrow 
Mm. It does. It, is he really? I don't know. But before we get to that conversation, Matt, we will let you go and enjoy the rest of your Monday night, my friend. Yeah, cheers, Thank Matt. you so much. Thanks, I would say see you during the next season, but again, yeah. you've just <laughs> off and left yeah. us. Yeah. No, yeah. Good, good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. Need it. Thanks good ever luck. so much, my friend. Look Come after on. yourself. A lot of time for Matt. A lot of time indeed. Yeah. We'll okay. run for another 10 or so minutes. So if you want to get involved, hit the link. So come and say, have your say on your platform. Be you a town fan or a Rotherham fan. We want to hear from you tonight after town has signed Freddy Ladapo. Matt, what? go for well, it. Bit, I'm just thinking that's what we've just had that conversation there speaks volumes. So McKenna said, we don't score set piece goals. Now you just yeah. heard from the horse's mouth, he scores a lot of set piece goals. And he always plays in a two, and it's got to be someone, uh, uh, you know, like, almost like a target man with him. So you're yeah. either thinking yeah. Woodrow, or in the discussion we had yesterday, of course, does Piggott get the nod? And he'll play in, as a two. Who knows? I mean, or oh, it could be a, a you know an, another signing. Who knows? But interesting that that speaks volumes to me. What you just said there. Yeah, it does. And, and one of the things I really sort of picked up on towards the end there was he needs somebody with him. If I was going to be the manager of the yeah. Football Club, knowing what I know mm-hmm. about Freddie Latapo, you'd need a Matt Smith, a Matt Smith with him, which is a, a target man, a hold up man, a, uh, the yeah. players going to do the, the nasty grunt work, if you like. You know, the, the work that doesn't really get appreciated, uh, but you know. Alan Lee unlocked Pablo Canago because Alan Lee took a lot of yeah. defenders with him to create that space. Corley Woodrow, right. for the record, is 184 centimetres, which is about six foot two, six foot three. So, you know, by looking at the player, it doesn't look like a, a unit, but he certainly is a, 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 a tall boy. Thank I just you, wonder, though, you know, I just wonder though if it was Ladapo or Woodrow, and then there's there's other targets. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. to come and pair with, with one of those two and and if it yeah. maybe maybe it was a a woodrow if the if the dapo goes to wednesday type situation because i don't think mark ashton's a, a, a fool i don't think mark ashton the type of chief executive matt that we've had in the past that focuses all on one target and if it falls through hasn't got a clue what dad a month is around you know what i mean oh yeah he's playing he's playing he's got a chess board here so and so moves there now we move it into that position mm. and now we've got the depot. So yeah, absolutely. I I, I totally yeah. agree. It'd be very interesting. I'd be interested to see who the second player is going to be that we get in. Again, that um, will speak volumes of things, won't it? Well, yeah. Before I bring Mr. Anderson in, we've got Anderson and Colin waiting. If you want to get involved, please do hit the link. As I say, it is your platform. Uh, we are live to have to have give fans the chance to have their say this evening on the signing of Free Ladapo once his contract with Rotherham has expired. But it's all been mediated up, so you 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 you've got to guess that the, the ink is dry. Uh I, you say this, the second sign is interesting for me. It, the next two moves are very interesting in, in terms of attacking moves because hmm. the second striker, if there is one, very important. But it's also that that supporting cast because at the moment, yeah. on the books as things stand, you have Wesley Burns, which nobody's got an issue with at all, of course, Connor Chaplin and Sone or Sane, Aluka, depending on who you ask. Um, yeah. That for me is still missing... Yeah, a cog. Right. Obviously, is it a Selena? Yeah. Does does this signing mean Selena's now no longer even a target? Because you're looking now to to flood an area with a different type of player. Where where does it leave yeah. the, the, the the supporting cast? Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, there's lots of permutations here, isn't there? I was thinking about Selena then. Surely it's going to be a left sided player. That's that's what I'm thinking because he does score. As Matt said, there he does score a lot of goals in the six yard box, and they're obviously their balls coming in. From the flanks. Mm. Now, we've got that sorted out with Burns. We didn't have that option on the left side last season, particularly, did we, in terms of attacking? We didn't. Fire. I mean, it was, like, ridiculous sometimes, wasn't it? How heavy we were on the right side of the of the pitch compared to the left. So it. maybe it's a left-sided player. But, I mean, I, I think you're right. And we'll go, we'll go back to the chess analogy. I think it's all... that. I think that's how Ashton and McKenna are playing this. Now we've got Ladapo. Now we need to get someone who can feed him. Now, is that going to be that left-sided player? Is it going to be Selena? I, I, it's almost like they're just joining dots here a little bit, I think. Uh, yeah, and as a final point before I bring Lee in, I do promise you, Lee, I'm now looking at my formation sheet in front of me that I've been looking at for most of the weeks, thinking, right, we're a 3 5 2 team. We're looking at 3 5 2 targets. I know I don't know if I need to get another sheet because <laughs> I don't know if we're going to play a 3 5. Well, it wasn't even a 3 5 2, was it? Well, would it be a 3 5 2, a more traditional? Three five two with 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 two up top, and if so, Craig at Portsmouth says, could we prize Matt Smith from him as well? Now that would be a good move, but I don't think that's very very possible. Do you? No, no, it's probably not particularly realistic. But Justin yes, Clark Harris would be delightful. 
Yeah, 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 exactly. Again, I don't think that's realistic. Do you really think D Max is going to sell to us? I, I, I don't, I don't see think it. he'd. I, I think the price just went up. Yeah, <laughs> 10 million says Barry Fry. Well, that's um, Jack Taylor. But if you're, but if you are Darren McAnthony at Peterborough and you've just seen them sign for the depot and you think, right, they're going to pair somebody with the depot, you are hmm. going to now think, well, you know, if they want to have that combination, which I know would be a good combination as well. I'm a good footballing brain as Darren McAnthony is. Yeah, he's, he's one for you. Thinking, I'm just, you know, I'm thinking off the top of my head here a little bit. People in the comments might be able to tell me. Was Connor Grant left wing back at Plymouth when Le Depot was there? Oh, good shout. Get active in the chat. Right, we've got Perfect. McKenna has got to have a target man in mind. Otherwise, FL will struggle, says Adrak, who is a Rotherham fan. Uh, we know that because yeah. he's been around, yeah. uh, around, the, around the platform all year. Thanks for coming back to us. Max Pitchford. Evening, gents. Good player on a free. I think he's an upgrade on Bonner Nord, but let's see. Mark Dowling. By the way, Mark, o Obi-Wan is an absolute fantastic series. I absolutely agree with your last tweet, my friend. Don't care about this, about this lad's pass. Long... Don't care about this lad's pass as long as he scores and gets us promoted. Great attitude to have. Lee Anderson. Is it now Yay. a case of James Norwood who... <laughs> yeah, who? Who? Yeah, who? There's an in the room. Lee, talk to us. Pretty Different nice. types. Yeah, I mean, I was really, Excited. really pos really positive um, about three hours ago. But listening to Matt, not not this Matt, the other Matt. I, I, you know, I'm thinking, well, he doesn't run, he doesn't do that. He's like the old Twix advert, isn't he? or the Kit Kat advert. You know, they can't sing, they can't dance, but they'll go a long way. Uh, that sort of thing. So, but then think about uh, Javier Hernandez. Now, obviously, he's nowhere near the quality of of a Chicharito, but Imagine that in a League One team where, yet yeah, last year, just a player that the ball hits the six yard box, it's a goal. How many yeah. times did we fall short at the vital moment? Yeah. yeah, watching his, I mean, we have, but watching his goals, a lot of them have come from the, I think Matt said it earlier, but they've all come from the second phase. They've all come from the flick on and the, mm. you know, and the ball dropping around in the box. And the other guy from Rotherham said it as well, didn't he? So we haven't got that at the moment. We've never had that for the last couple of years, have we? The ball bouncing around and staying in the box. But, but I think the key point here for me is is that Rotherham play a completely different style to what we do. And they're saying that he can't play up top on his own and they're probably, you know, they might be right. But Caden Jackson can't really play up top on his own under a team that's going to lock the, knock the ball long to him. So if we're playing the ball on the floor like we do and we're playing through thirds, he might be able to play a lone striker role. He, he, he could be that option in that area where he's just going to, you know, nip in in the channels because he does score goals like that. He can beat a player. Yeah. Um, so I'd uh, just be interesting. But again, we don't know the formation. And no. I think you're right about you could easily play two up top. He could almost be like a second number 10 as well. If he's picking up those second balls, running from deeper to yeah. maybe the flick ons and things. So I think, I mean, McKenna's played two up front or played, say two up front. He's played two strikers, hasn't he? There's times where he's played, um, Piggott and Norwood, Piggott and Bon, um, Norwood and Bon. And, and so there are times Jackson and Piggott have played together. So I don't think I don't think we're going to see a nailed on system. I think we're going to see what we did this season just gone. I think it's going to vary and, and we've still got to get those other other players in the door. Um, but I mean a good start, a positive start. He's yeah. you know, he's he's on a free. So he's probably got Norwood's wages. So that's what like for like, um, <laughs> but but be but the but the next one will be key as you say it's got to be a striker. We need a a big target man. That well, I'm say big target man. We need somebody that's going to win the ball in the air. Now, out of all the goals I've, I've out of his highlights and his goals, I think I've seen him score one header, one direct from a header. So there's got to be someone else to come in. He's not gonna he's not gonna rise at the back post and score you ten headers, is he? We don't no. play like that. But we no. we play differently. So McKenna sees something different in him. I, you know, otherwise I see it that way. I'm just, but I'm just think, thinking, Lee, that Caden Jackson comment. Maybe that's maybe Caden's the key to, to unlocking all the train of thoughts here. Because now suddenly you've got two players that can't play up top on their own in Caden Jackson and Frillian Ladapo. You've got Joe Piggott, who can be utilised in in that hold up role. Is it a simple case of Caden and, and, and Joe? They're your backup strikers. Caden's your box in the box for a better term. Piggott's your, your hold-up man. Ladapo's your number one hold up, uh, fox in the box. Now you need that other 
hold up man that that's literally going to be your four strikers next year and maybe it will be a two maybe because i like, as you say Kevin jackson can't play out top on his own no you you need you need four you need four strikers we talked about center backs the other day and the thing that gets me is 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 a lot of people saying oh well you know he doesn't come here to warm the bench well someone's got to sit on the bench you can't just have 11 players you've got to have a squad of 18 20. there's going to be players that miss out mm. and you're going to have strength you know you've got to have 17 18 players that are gonna that, that that could go into the first team that's how you're going to get promoted you need that strength in depth so so these players will have to sit on the bench won't they because why would they you know, you know, they're not going to think that they're just going to be number one. McKenna is not going to tell anybody that you're a that you're a shoe on. He'll probably say, "Well, we might need you in this situation. We might need you in that." You know, but you've got to come here and work hard. I mean, yeah. what the guy was saying: if he, if the guy, if 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 Ledet would come in and doesn't run, well, then he's not going to last very long at Portman Road because because Mike Mike will have him out after after <laughs> twenty minutes, and you know. <laughs> but he would, you know, but no, no one's going to tolerate it. They want hard work. We, we, yeah, are we going to want? We, well, are we going to want that? But going back to what you said about his attitude and that, well, you could say that about any player. His time is probably up at the club, and you, and you can relate yeah. to what Caden Jackson was saying about not, you know, feeling out of love with the club or not, you know, didn't want to come to yeah. work in every day. Well, and you know, and Backinson was the same. But Backinson looked no problem. There's no issues with him here. Here was there. Yeah, so that, you know, yeah. players players fall in and out, fall out yeah. with each other and and stuff, and um, so I don't see that as a I don't see that that as an issue. Let um, me give you a name, Lee Flynn Downs. Many town fans were told Swansea fans if they'd been asked about Flynn Downs, oh, he wanted out and a transfer requests in. You know, he's mm. not done what he needs to do. Arguably, Swansea's best player last year, Flynn Downs. You know, well, he's <laughs> going to be playing in the Premier League, isn't he? I mean, there's no doubt about that. There you go. Because you know, there's, so. There's, you know, so you respect what a fan says, but equally, stats don't lie. And the stats are: this is a goal scorer at this yeah. football at this at this yeah. level. Yeah, he is. I think Rotherham were. I think Rotherham could have um, uh, added a year to his contract. I, I think they had the option, didn't they, for a year? Yeah, I think. I think they would have probably. I mean, if there's been trouble at the end of the season, they they want to see him go. He ended his transfer request in. My understanding is in January. Or February time, so yeah. that he wanted out. If he wanted out, he, you know, he's running down his contract or whatever. He's probably may, maybe lost a bit of interest, falling out with with uh, somebody, you know. So I just think that he'll be, um, you know, he'll be there. He'll be he'll be raring to go, won't he? And um, hopefully, Absolutely. hopefully he'll be uh, he'll he'll be good for us. But Perfect. just trusting what McKenna's doing. Don't Absolutely. forget, you've got you got agents. Running the show sometimes, putting the strings behind, haven't you? Look what's happened with Tyree Simpson. All mm. the agents being blamed there. It's all, you know, it's a game, again, it's a game of chess, isn't it, behind the scenes and off yeah. the pitch in football. The agent said, stick your transfer request then. We'll see if we can get you uh, playing regular Wednesday or whatever it was. Yeah. I mean, be. he's not, as I say, I think if they, he would have, I think if Rotherham hadn't gone up, they'd have probably taken up the, the year's contract because he didn't score many goals in, in the championship, did he? So, that, so that that's my only. Yeah, I mean, in a struggling. Yeah, in a struggle. Was it nine all season? I'm not sure they're nine in the league. Yeah. Was it some cup guy? I don't know. Anyway, but that's not setting the world alight. So they probably feel that they can, they they can get somebody better yeah, for the for right. the championship. But yeah. you know, I I don't worry about the form too much because we 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 can see it go both ways. We can see how we were um, when Piggott signed twenty odd goals a season. Hasn't had the best. Hasn't had the best start, and like like we've said before, you've you've got, you know, you've got someone who's just scored twenty five goals for Wigan, some with his head, and he couldn't even head at the ball at Portman Road. There you go, exactly. You know, so exactly. so you just don't. You just got to get that mix or just who, fall into place. So he's free, isn't he? You know, who knows, Lee? This could be the making of Piggott at Portman Road. Maybe they'll, those two will click. Oh, well, I great. think Piggott will. I hope Piggott stays. You know, I. I it depends is what we don't what we don't have an insight into is the budget. We know there's money about. You can't just go throw it to get a League One. The money's going to be spent in the championship. It's when we get to the championship you're going to start seeing <laughs> yes. six, uh, seven, eight, yeah. you know, six, eight, but seven, you know, large seven figure sums. We we have to get out and we have to be reasonable with the budget that we do that yeah. with. Yeah, and you know, yeah, and he's yeah, a yeah. he's a free he's a free signing. So apart from his wages, there's it's a, a bit of a lower risk, I think. But Lee, I, wonder if 
Woodrow, Woodrow. definitely. Woodrow. I like Woodrow. I think he okay. do well. Lee still wants Woodrow. Is that right? I don't want yeah, I'd, I'd have him. Yeah. Okay. He Lee, we love you. Yes, cheers, right. guys. I'm going to bring Colin in in a second. Uh, all right. We appreciate your comments. But Woodrow is your next signing. Is that right? Just to get this to clarify before you go. Well, he'd be the he'd be the other strike. If we got him, I'd be happy. He's a proper all rounder. He is mm. left foot, right foot, inside the box, outside the box. Hold play up, the ball. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And Selena. Lee. And, and, and oh, here he goes. He, he dropped that one in. Bit like I did with Ashton towards the end. And Selena, we love you, Lee. Look after yourself. Yeah, see you later. Thanks for coming on. We've got Mason Clayton. McKenna has worked with Pogba, who can be brilliant one game and then absolutely rubbish the next. He'll be used to working with lazy players. You have to you have to look at it from McKenna's point of view as well. You know, they've just like picked his name out of a hat. They've also been looking at him for quite a while, knowing what his contract situation was via Ashton and the dashboard. And they've looked at him and gone. You know, we can do something with him. So, great. I mean, I'm, I'm personally excited. I mean, look, John C in the chat, I'll give you this straight, lads. You've made a mistake. I bet he wasn't saying that when he was cheering his goals at the New York Stadium. Well, um, yeah, we'll come to that. Stephen Bills, we couldn't have signed him if he couldn't do a complete job for us for a totally exactly. different team. Rotherham exactly. Mega's more flexibility into the tactics and formation. And he did, and he did play with Grant at he Plymouth. He did. Rob Holmes, Grant and Ladapo had a season together at Plymouth when he scored There you go. Goals. Interesting, that. Interesting. Uh, Is there still taking the number 17 shirt next season? No idea, Mark. We'll try and find out for you. Just uh, for mind, is that the delay in the shirt, do you think? To try and get another sponsorship in with Shearer? Possibly. Possibly. I, 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 it'll, be, it'll be soon, I'm sure. Because it's, it's yeah. nearly June. June on Wednesday. It'll be, it'll be mm. soon. It will be absolutely soon. See sure. you Wednesday then. <laughs> uh, just reading on Twitter, this is a, this is a tweet from, uh, I believe, the Charlton fan. Ipswich Town this afternoon signed Freddie Ladapo from a championship club. The, I mean, that turns very much. Yeah. True, but still, you know, uh, the mm -hmm. best striker we faced at the Valley last season. While our rivals signed quality players, our owner isn't even out of the starting blocks again. We've been where that fan has been, <laughs> yes, we but to read that, yeah. the best player he, he's seen at uh, the Valley last right. year was the Dapo, and now he's the Town shirt. That's that's what you want. It said it would have been Ipswich Town at the Valley last season, would it? Jesus Christ, that what a terrible awful. performance that was! <laughs> that was woeful. Uh, STST is a cheap sign to allow to spend more on a main striker, I'd say. Colin, you've seen them all from the good to the bad to the ugly. What do you make hey, of this sign him? Colin's pleased. Good evening, man. Good evening, right. Gov. Uh, what, what, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm excited about it. I, I think you've got, you know, keep the lid on it a little bit, maybe. Um, but excited, yeah. I think, obviously, uh, like the chat has gone tonight um i think we you know we definitely need another one in like i said in the chat earlier on um yeah. and we've got 100 percent on this one we we have our little differences on on one or two little occasions but i would re you know we've got ladapo on a free um obviously on decent wages i would presume um but now i think there's a time and I really, really trust, I'm not just saying this, I really trust McKenna, I really trust Ashton, yeah. unlike a lot of other people. Um, but I do really trust those two guys, and also O'Leary, who would have a lot to say in all of these matters. And I think if we go really, not so much big time, but if we go really all out, to get the striker in now. And look, I'm not disagreeing with Lee. I wouldn't be unhappy with Woodrow, but I would be over the moon with Clark Harris. And I personally think if, if I was to get Clark Harris in now, alongside Ladapo plus, like Matt was quite uh, interestingly saying about the Conor Grant thing and the, and the link there, um, top two, definitely. If you was to sign those kind of players and you was to remain not virtually injury-free, but more or less injury-free uh, for the predominantly for most of the season and keep those red cards in the referee's pocket, I'd say top two, 100%. That's only if you get the right players in, obviously. And Clark Harris, 
would be, I think, the perfect foil for that Ladapo. How much would you pay for Clark Harris then, Colin? You got the checkbook out. What are you paying? What's Dara going to ask? Barry Fry's going to ask you for what? ten mil, maybe eleven. <laughs> well, he, he can go and get on his bike for ten mil, obviously. But uh, <laughs> look, look, we don't know, and quite rightly so, we don't know the ins and outs of how much we've got to spend and what have you. But how much do I think that bloke would be worth? Thirty-one odd goals the last time in Division One. It was, yeah. 16 odd last season in a, in a struggle, or whatever it was, 13, in a struggling, a, a big time struggling side of the championship. So you're talking about 49, 50 goals in the last two seasons, an average of 25 per season. Mm -hmm. I would pay three or four million for him cash, bang, to get him in. Wow. I mean, a lot of people might think that it probably isn't a lot of money for him. Maybe. I don't know. But I personally think if you could get him for three or four million, um, that would be a decent deal, I think. I don't know that'd what be, you think, Doug. That'd be big money to Peter as well, regardless of like you know all the talk about and Barry Fry saying 10 mil. You give a league one club three to four, four and a half million. That's big money at third tier, isn't it? Absolutely, Matt. And, and, and another thing to think about is this, and, and it includes Ladapo. When you think of Ladapo, Clark Harris, also Woodrow, also Conor Grant, um, the four clubs that those guys have been playing for, Peterborough average normally, apart from when we go there, or Sheffield Wednesday, they average about Eight nine thousand, Barnsley yeah. Barnsley average about eight or nine thousand in the championship. Um, Plymouth average about fourteen thousand. Um, you know, so these guys are playing in front of crowds, averaging probably between ten and fourteen thousand. Next yeah. season, and, and that's probably one of the selling points to to Ladapo today. These guys will be coming here and pro and probably probably. Especially if, especially if we sign another couple of decent players, probably be playing in in front of average an average crowd of about twenty one, twenty two, twenty three thousand. If not more, and, um, yeah. that's a big selling that's a big selling point for a lot of players. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, well, we spoke about that yesterday, Colin. That probably put some players off a little bit. Haladki being one, I think, going from a small crowd at Salford to suddenly playing in front of a big crowd at Portman Road. You know, well, it's kind of the thing, the thing, the thing is, Matt. I I've said this to Andy and Ian several times. I'm wondering, poor old Joe. You know, and I do say poor old Joe, and I mean that. I I wonder whether that was maybe, and 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 that's an underline in the word maybe. I wonder whether that was maybe one of his biggest. Oh, that problems a word, you know. Well, one of his. Biggest, um, you know, kind of setbacks, if you like, the, the yeah. fact that maybe coming from Wimbledon, playing in front of 4,000, yeah. jumping up, jumping up 20, 24,000. Yeah. It's a big jump, you know, and not, look, you get some, you get somebody like um, years ago, you get somebody like Arnold or Franz, absolutely love playing in front, play better in front of 50,000 old yeah. traffic. Mm. Right, but <laughs> other 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 players will go into their little shell. I can't yeah. do this, and 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 that applies as you go down the levels. You know, um, it just does, and you know you'll never you'll never be able to hide that as a player. You just you just can't. You yeah, you can either do it. There's it's either black or white with that kind of thing. You know. Mm. You can either do it or you can't. And yeah. and and perhaps Joe struggled with that. I don't know. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Colin, everyone loves your your it's passion, it, your enthusiasm, your dreaming. Um we love you and we appreciate you. But so Lee was Corley Woodrow. You're telling me your next move would be Johnson Clark Harris, correct? A hundred percent. But like, but like I said, Gov, and I totally mean it, I like Lee's like Lee said, I, I would not be unhappy. I'd be unhappier, 
But I wouldn't be unhappy if they got Woodrow. But we definitely, in my opinion, we definitely need to get another striker in. Okay, perfect. Colin, we love you. Appreciate you. Look Thanks, after Colin. yourself. We'll speak to you soon. Blue Army, I don't mind who we get in. I'll take Clark Harris definitely, just as long as we get rid of that donkey piggot, says Blue Army. Uh, give him a chance, Blue Army. I do, uh, he Late does make a in the comments. People wouldn't sell Johnson Clark Harris. Listen, everyone's a selling club if the price is right. Everyone's a selling club outside Man City and, and possibly Liverpool. Even Liverpool is selling Mane to Bayern Munich. Do you know what I mean? Like, exactly. eventually, everybody's got a price and a time. Um, yeah. Yes. yeah. It, I just, I, I don't know about three or four million pounds as a fee. I just, you he's 27, what? so hitting his prime, I just don't know if that's a fee you'd be, I'd be comfortable it's doing. Still big, it. That's still a big wedge in League One, though, isn't it? It's, it's, it's fairly big in the championship unless you're a, a go, you know, top side gunning for that promotion, I guess. But yeah, I mean, you I say that. I mean, for us, I mean, for us, you get the depot in and you got him with you. Look, we could dream about all this. Uh, they're, they're all names we could put forward. Who knows what discussions are taking place behind the scenes? You just never know, do you? Lewis Robinson would pay a million for Benicophobi. Was it Bristol yeah, City and the rest of Scored more than Johnson Clark Harris in the championship last season. Would, would he be? He's got one year left on his on his. The thing is, like, would he not be worth more than a million if he's good more than well, he, I would say he's more of a Ladapo style player than the, your target man. He used to be Arsenal, Benick, a phobic. Mm. Yeah, uh, Wolves as well. Wolves, yeah. Uh, Bournemouth? Bournemouth yeah, yeah, yeah out, big money. They need a Bournemouth, I think. Yeah, well, how much do we yeah. know about Benick a Oh, my God. We know too much. We know too much. Far Ma too much. Name Martin Lambert, specialised subject, Benick a phobic. Benick a phobic. Yeah. To be yeah. fair, he was one of my major signings of football manager a couple of years oh, ago. You know, yeah, I've yeah, fallen yeah. in love with the player since then. He's, I, he's a gold I, machine. I can't see Bennett coming in if you've got Jackson the Depo. I, I, going on what Matt just told us, I think you can just be see someone who's a bit more of a target man. Maybe. Ten million pound Bournemouth signed him for. Well, there you go. I mean, you know, that's some fall from grace, isn't it? Ten million to to Bournemouth in the year oh. uh, twenty sixteen yeah, yeah. to Richard Town for like a million. You, the next, like you said earlier, the next move is going to be very interesting now because now the door is open. The guy, you know, the farmer's gate is open. Now we're going to see who else is going to be coming through. Mm -hmm. That will really give us a good idea of where this, of what this team's going to be, what the formation's going to look like, and how we will play. Absolutely. Josh says he, we, Josh believes we won't start on target, man. Guarantee it'll be a small, quick striker. Uh, Craig at Portsmouth. Wickham's had too many injuries. Rhodes has, only, has lost a yard of pace. I wouldn't have either because somebody asked about Rhodes and Wickham being on freeze fix. They blues. The, 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 the thing with Josh, I've got Neil Perks very quickly. He's just sneaked in the, the VIP room there, unnoticed. Back back post, unmarked. Like, friend, like, hopefully, like, Ladapo next season. But he's, yeah. I'll get him on very quickly. But Josh's comment there, Matt, if it was to be a small, quick-footed striker, would that almost signal a one up top? philosophy with three very similar strikers that can be rotated like they were last year? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I'd argue we've got that on the books already. Connor Shablin. Yeah. I mean, that's what, that's why the Caul Cauley Woodrow um, transfer made sense to me. Because you're then reuniting two players that were, that were successful in a playoff finishing team at, that was Barnsley. So that made total sense to me. Um, I, I still, my, my gut feeling, having seen the depot sign today, is that we're going to play two up front. That's kind of my gut feeling on it. Um, I don't know. We're all, that's the beauty of it, all, isn't it? We're, we're in the, we know, we're in the summer now. We can all, we can all guess and find out. Absolutely. Neil, very quickly, my friend, Hi, welcome Neil. in. How are you, sir? How you doing? Yeah, hello. Yeah, I've just sort of, um, yeah, I'm really, very good, thank you. Yeah, I've just sort of lost touch with everything, really. Uh, my best mate told me that we signed Ladapo. I was at the gym and he messaged me and said, oh, it looks like you're going to sign Ladapo. And then it just suddenly came through. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, things yeah, things are good. Yeah, things are mo moving along, really. I've got my car now and things. So, right. um, you're driving now? I'm driving a, yeah, driving a little bit lo locally at the minute and that. Yeah, I don't feel that confident to go further afield at the minute. Um, but yeah, locally, um, I I've got my job tied up now to go back to Dorset County Hospital as well now. So yeah, things has been coming That's along. Nice. Yeah, things are coming together. It's so yeah, good work, man. Yeah, please for you. Please for you. It's all about yeah. coming along. Freddie Ladapo, first signing in the door. Things are coming along for Ashton and that dashboard. What is Neil down at in the Dorset, Somerset, Plymouth area of the of the world? Sure, he's the player you've seen play before, right? 
Um, I don't think I've ever seen him, to be honest, Gov. Um, oh. I've heard quite a lot about him. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I was not around that time. I mean, my mate certainly knows of him. He he seems to yeah. think he'll be he'll be quite a decent sign, and he seems to yeah. think. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Does so what 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 has your friend that's seen him play told you about him? What 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 what's been his nugget of information? <laughs> He's actually not told me a lot. Actually, he'd only message today. We're talking tomorrow, but. Um, I think he did quite well at Plymouth, I think, by all accounts. Yeah. Um yeah. They, seem, yeah. They, seem to, they seem to have had a few strikers, Plymouth, and sewed them on, haven't they? Like Ebanks, Blake mm -hmm. in the past and people yeah. like that. And, yeah. um, I mean, they're even, they're even talking about, because I think two of their players now, um, well, Kamara doesn't want to sign on for Argo, as far as I'm aware. He doesn't want to sign mm -hmm. on. Um, nice. So he's a big player for them. And they're on about possibly even Hardy might go as well. Um, so... He he doesn't seem a bad little striker that Hardy, but um, um, don't don't think for don't don't think for Ipswich at all. But I mean, he doesn't seem a bad striker really. He's done quite well. Um, where, where do you take things now, Neil? Where you know you're at the wheel, both literally and figuratively. Wheel, literally, yeah. Neil's at the wheel. <laughs> yeah. um, where does Neil take things from here? We've heard where Matt and Colin and Co would take things. Where what, what, what's your transfer philosophy from here? Is it is it another partner? Have you got your strikers? Is it a left winger? Where are you heading from here, Neil? I've only just come into the chat, so I've sort of missed all of it. But I know when I spoke to you last time, I mean, I've always been of the opinion that we just needed four players anyway. That's what I've always said. Um, so obviously now we've got Ladapo. I'd say technically that was three. I'd still say another striker. I still think a centre midfield starter by Morsey. I still say that, um, and I, and I still say a left back as well. So that's the that's yeah. the three players I'm looking at. But who yeah. who exactly is the million dollar question? And I'd still like to see the Argo player coming at left back. But are we even interested oh, in him? Yeah. We're probably not even interested in him, are we? You know. But well, I th the thing is, I think with this move, Matt, nobody mm. saw it come in or, or certainly no. people didn't publicly declare it like last year that if, no. if they saw it come in no. um it was a surprise wasn't it the ship is water site so who knows yeah yeah, who yeah. We're after so to speak mm. could there be another one to follow tomorrow you just don't know do you could they've done you know two medicals today or whatever it might have been could it be connor grant could you know could you know you, you literally that the, the ship is water site as it as it were because yeah. last year you know much as we love 35,000 foot Captain Crunch. Things were all over social media. At yeah, aspect. yeah, yeah. They've certainly tightened that up. Absolutely. There was no, there was not even a whisper of this, was there? Maybe no, about at all. A few, no. actually a few minutes before the announcement, maybe a few people. Yeah. But I don't think yeah. we're too far wrong, Neil, to be honest. With those yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't think we're going to need more than about three because we, we've, got the right. nuclear, we've got the nucleus of the team there. I mean, the defence and the goalkeeper, to me, is sorted. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And obviously, obviously Burns and Morsey and things, as long as we can keep hold of these guys. Um, and obviously, you've got two strikers at the minute, haven't you? I still wonder what will happen with Piggott. I can't, I can't, if he stays, I think it'll just be a bit part player. I, I don't, I can't really see Piggott having a massive role to play. Um, mm. Yeah, we, we're going to need another striker, I think, definitely. Okay. Neil, we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for popping by. Uh, good luck behind that wheel. We've got Norman. Given this was out of the blue, it makes me think Woodrow's a non-starter. Lewis hopes uh, we do all our business while Rich is on holiday. That would be fun. Uh, Lee, be window's not open, so yeah, it's a buying plan is still 11 days away. Yeah, come on, come on, Lee. Come on, Lee. Things can get out. Things can be agreed. Uh, the window is just uh, a, a, a starting point. Um, as as today proves, really. You know, the, the, the date is is immaterial. It's um, it's what, what you can agree how, what and when. Um, yeah, absolutely. He's still, he's still what four and a half, five weeks away from actually joining us officially. Yeah. And here he is today at the underground. You know, all, all that. Yeah. Yeah. It's mm. just the date everything can be co confirmed, as in yeah. ratified yes. with your friends at the FA, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The day it's the fax machine turned on after after a, a, a six month hiatus. Where was the last? Have you ever used the uh, fax machine? I only went dinner with the FA, funnily enough. <laughs> I last used one of those in about 2001, I think it was. I only went posting my yo yeah, card fine. Yeah, has the facts come through? <laughs> what is this? 21 years ago? <laughs> Love it. Right, we're done. We're dusted for today. First transfer talk in the book. Love good. it. Hopefully be back with you again. 
Uh, I don't mind coming back off um, my hiatus, my weeks break. If I was going to do some painting tonight, you know, I don't mind stepping back into the chair if there's transfers even coming, Matt. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think we're going to. You seem to think we're going to hear about the kit soon, don't you? So we'll have another show on that one. We'll find out who that manufacturer is going to be. Mark Ashton was bought with tight on that one, wasn't he? Again, mm. I, I think there could be another signing to follow quickly. That's my, my take. <sighs> Love it. Well, Hopefully not tomorrow night, because I am out tomorrow night. Um, but, you know, I'll take the gear with me. I'll go live wherever, whenever you know me. I'm like Jeremy Beadle, out and about. Um, so <laughs> watch Chatting out, watch out. out. Buddy, oh, that's about out. 40 years, that. Watch out, watch out. Right, we're done with Dusty. We're back. Well, we're back when the club want to put some news out. If not, back Sunday, we're talking town. Enjoy. Um, but until then. All the best. Wand in the books. <laughs>